A super small robot can create its own clones. This robot is so small that if you line up a thousand copies of it, they would be as large as one single human hair. Wow. It sounds like something from sci-fi, but it's not. These tiny robots are real and could revolutionize medicine or, if things go wrong, turn the planet into a lifeless wasteland. These tiny robots are what we call nanobots, things just a little bit bigger than a single atom of gold. While common-sized robots are usually made from metal and electronic components, these nanobots are made of DNA, the same stuff that makes you, well, you. But instead of using DNA to build a human, scientists have figured out how to fold DNA into tiny shapes like origami and create microscopic machines. These machines can do some pretty amazing things, like repair damaged DNA or clean up toxic waste in the ocean. They're like the Swiss army knives of the microscopic world. But here's the twist. If you put these robots in a place with extra DNA, they can use it to build copies of themselves. That's right, they can self-replicate. And if they get into your bloodstream, they could, theoretically, use your DNA as building blocks to create an army of clones. Pretty cool, but also very terrifying. Now, let's say a researcher decides to test these nanobots in a lab. They drop one tiny bot into a bottle filled with DNA and other molecules it can use. The bot gets to work, rearranging the DNA to create a clone. That clone makes another clone, and suddenly, you've got a microscopic factory pumping out nanobots faster than you can say, uh-oh. It gets worse when you realize that these bots grow exponentially. One becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, and you know… After just 10 hours, you'll have 68 billion nanobots in that bottle. Once they've used up all the DNA in the bottle, they'll start looking for more material to feed their cloning frenzy. This is where things start to go south. You see, these nanobots aren't picky eaters. They can break down not just DNA, but pretty much any organic molecule they can find. If this bot can eat anything, it means it can also eat normal carbon atoms. And the moment they all run out of the supplies inside the bottle, they'll start looking for new material outside of it. And, well, carbon is the one element that is common to all living things. This basically means that every animal and plant in the world is made of carbon. Carbon is also the second most abundant element in the human body. You get the memo, right? Carbon is the building block of life, so now every living thing has become food for these nanobots. Those bots are now a huge school of fish attacking a shark, and all they know is making clones. That's basically their whole life. So when the swarm of nanobots eventually escapes the lab, they'll start devouring everything in their path. Forests? Gone. Crops? Gone. Wildlife? Mm, also gone. The nanobots will break down all organic matter into smaller pieces and transform them into new nanobots. Even bacteria and viruses will get eaten, which might sound great until you realize that ecosystems rely on these tiny organisms to function. Without them, the food chain collapses. Bees starve because there are no plants to pollinate. With no bees, the remaining plants can't reproduce, especially if we consider that 85% of plants with flowers need animals like bees to survive. With no plants, herbivores will be the next on the extinction list. When they're gone, carnivores will perish too, because there are no herbivores to hunt. And humans? Well, we're not exactly at the top of the food chain anymore. In less than two days, there will be so many nanobots that they will be heavier than Earth. When all the organic matter – this means plants, animals, and obviously us – is gone, these robots will turn to the next best thing – inorganic materials, like soil, rocks, and water. Of course, if we're talking about inorganic things, we must include buildings, roads, and other human-made structures too. In only a few days, Earth's surface will begin to disintegrate. While eating everything in their way, these nanobots will release waste products. Yes, it's robot poop. Except their poo is actually a ridiculous amount of heat that could increase the average temperature of our planet and destroy the ozone layer. If the nanobots are fast enough, humans won't be able to stop them in time. Without food, water, or shelter, civilizations will collapse. If people in some countries manage to survive, they will be living in a wasteland. Now, before you start building a bunker, let's take a deep breath. While the grey goo scenario is a fascinating thought experiment, 
it's not exactly realistic, at least not yet. First, these nanobots aren't fully independent. They rely on external triggers, like UV light or specific temperature changes, to function. Without human intervention, they'll just sit there like tiny, useless paperweights. Second, they're picky eaters, hmm, for now. So far, these bots can only use specific parts of DNA to build clones. They can't just chow down on any organic molecule they find, unless someone programs them to. Which brings us to the next point. It's all about intent. The Grey Goose scenario isn't something that could happen by accident. It would require a deliberate effort to create nanobots that are both self-replicating and capable of consuming everything in their path. And let's be honest, except for Dr. Evil, most scientists aren't in the business of destroying the world. Finally, these nanobots are not invincible. They produce waste in the form of heat and toxic gases. And if too many of them were working at once, the planet would heat up to the point where they'd literally cook themselves. And even if they could survive a ridiculously high temperature, the things they eat – plants, water, us – would not. So no food, no clones. Simple as that. Now that the doomsday scenario is out of the way, let's discuss the cool, sciencey part. These tiny guys can help humans cure health conditions without surgery, clean up polluted oceans, or even produce insulin for people who have diabetes. These nanobots could revolutionize medicine, environmental science, and technology. They're like the ultimate multitaskers, if we use them responsibly. The Grey Goose scenario might sound far-fetched, but history is full of examples where well-intentioned ideas go horribly wrong. Take Australia, for instance. In 1935, the country imported cane toads from Hawaii to eat the beetles that had been destroying sugarcane crops. Fast forward to today, and there are over 200 million toads wreaking havoc on local ecosystems. The beetles? Well, they're still munching away, completely unfazed. So it's a classic case of good idea, bad execution. Technology also makes mistakes, like when we created bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics or malaria mosquitoes that are resistant to DDT. The same principle applies to nanobots. If we're not careful, we might create a problem far worse than the one we're trying to solve. That's why scientists are working on fail-safes, like UV lights or certain temperatures. They also use rare materials, such as diamond or titanium, to build nanobots, so they won't have much material to use if they wanted to start a clone war. Authorities are also keeping a close eye on who's developing this tech and why. After all, the whole Grey Goose scenario depends on just one ill-intentioned person with a lot of knowledge at hand. Of course, it is a cautionary tale, not a prediction. It reminds us to think carefully about the technology we create and the potential consequences of our actions. Nanobots could save lives, clean up the planet, and push the boundaries of science. Or they could turn the world into a lifeless pile of Grey Goo. The choice is ours. So, the next time you hear about a breakthrough in nanotechnology, remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And maybe keep an eye on those tiny robots, just in case. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.